I'm really honored to welcome Dr. Rosie Rajkumari today. She is Manipur State's Nodal Officer mm -hmm. for National Viral Hepatitis Control Program of the Government of India. And thank mm -hmm. you, uh, Dr. Rosie, for being with us today. Uh, could you please share an overview of uh, Manipur State's Viral Hepatitis Control Program? Uh, like when did it begin? Uh, how is it functioning? And what are the challenges and successes so far you have come across? Yes, uh, very once again, a very good afternoon. And I would like to thank for giving me such an opportunity to share about the viral hepatitis status of money. Yes, uh, viral hepatitis, uh, it was uh, launched in the year 2018 at the ministry level under the umbrella of uh, NHM uh, with the aim to provide free testing, screening, diagnosis and treatment. So I was there uh, during the launching program and then in the year 2019, ministry we are uh, asked to uh, you know uh, implement in the year 2019 that is on the day of observance of uh, viral uh, world hepatitis day by operationalizing at least one treatment center this is known as a uh, model treatment center so manipur was one of the states which would you know implement by operationalizing two uh, model treatment centers uh, in infal that is one in infal east that is jawaharlal nehru institute of medical sciences and another one at reins it's a central uh, medical college uh, that is uh, regional institute of medical sciences Okay, so we could start. And then uh, that was in the year 2019, in the month of July. Then as we go on, like uh, we were trying to implement it in the you know districts, we have all together one six, that is 16 districts. Out of this 16, uh, seven are newly created districts. And then it's yet to have a district hospital as such. But in the uh, remaining, uh, which is uh, in all districts, so in this uh, remaining, uh, Altogether nine districts, altogether nine districts, we uh, have uh, this one, model, uh, treatment centers. Okay, besides model treatment center, we have treatment centers in the district hospitals. And that's how we started. And in the, and we started only with hepatitis C treatment. So we started with hepatitis three, uh, C treatment, whereas screening for hepatitis B and C started from day, I mean, from the day of implementation itself. But as per the directives of the ministry, uh, we started in pace manner. So we started with hepatitis C treatment. And from 2021, on the day of observance of World Hepatitis Day, we started implementation of hepatitis B as well. That is the treatment. So now we have covered for we have that is 16 dish uh, treatment centers we have a challenge as you have said we were doing quite well before uh, i mean for hepatitis c before the COVID, and then as the COVID set in somehow we could manage with the help of uh, uh, some ngos we are who are working in the field of hepatitis so uh, during the lockdown and all this to help us a lot in reaching out our treatment medicine to the people who are really in need and those who are staying in, in far-flung areas and there is also one uh, uh the same you know, one organization we call it um msf that is medicine sans frontiers they are also we are having in two districts one is churchampur district where we have good number of uh, hepatitis uh, patients and also uh, one at uh, um, this Burma border, we call it in a one, uh, the same, Technopol districts. So uh, there also they have one, so we uh, talk to them. And then since we're having the same, uh, I mean, uh, same medicine for treatment of hepatitis C, we requested them to dispense uh, from their side. So they agreed and that's how, you know, there was uh, uninterrupted uh, uh, drug supply to everyone who are already in need of the treatment. And as uh, we go on, then we started hepatitis B treatment. And now it is only uh, stick to two centers, that is model treatment centers, uh, Reims and Jennings, and then we uh, very soon we will be coming to all the districts and uh, 
Now, uh, main problem is like in the other districts, we do not have, um, uh, now we have, but before, we could not uh, go for what you call uh, viral load testing. Viral load testing was done only at uh, model treatment centers that we have, okay. So people used to find it very difficult after the screening positive, uh, they could not come to reams and adjanians because of the difficult terrains and because of some reason or the other. And from our side also, we were asked to do uh, blood, uh, this thing, sample transportation. But then again, we do not have that, uh, your, this one, minus degree Celsius uh, fridges. So uh, the blood cannot be, you know, uh, kept. And that was our main problem. And uh, now what happened is like, uh, from now, after the COVID, almost in all the districts, we are having true nut. So true net machines are now available. And only thing is that um, we do not have, uh, you know, dedicated manpower. That it has to come from the health section, health department. So now they are also trying to appoint dedicated person for the true nets. And then once it is there, we will be in a position to start uh, this uh, viral load testing in all the districts uh, where we are having true nets. And we don't need artificial is also available, but we do not need artificial in the other districts beside MTC because uh, we don't have that much high number of uh, uh, client load. Okay, so RIMS and JNIM is having the maximum number of client loads because we are having all the facilities. So people uh, I mean, they tend to, you know, come to uh, Reims and Jenin so that by the time when they come here, they want to do everything like, uh, and they themselves also want to show to the gastroenterologists where we are having model treatment centers. All the two gastroenterologists are looking after the complicated cases. And even the non-complicated cases, uh, they just wanted to show it to the uh, gastroenterologists. That's why they prefer, but some of them, they don't. So uh, our main uh, challenges is like, because of COVID, we could not do it as per the uh, you know plan that we have done. I um, mean, like, uh, and now uh, the patients, uh, they really prefer that uh, viral load testing should be available in their, you know, own districts so that they don't have to come here. And as we all know that most of the uh, hepatitis C and B positive, as far as Manipur is concerned, unlike other states, the maximum is from the injecting drug users background drug users background. So uh, they definitely like uh, do not you know, want to come to the, because they belongs to the marginalized group of people. They don't have much, uh, you know, uh, budget to spend because sometimes if they have to come, they have to stay one night uh, in order to do all the testing and all. So they don't feel like coming to Infal. So they want, they are requesting that uh, uh, bad lot testing should be made available in their districts. This is what we are working on. And uh, manpower, as far as manpower is concerned, it is a challenge for us. Um, I mean, uh, from the starting of our uh, implementation of our program, uh, at the state level, we are supposed to be here, four of us, I mean, four more uh, staff, uh, recruitment is yet to be done. It is in the process, but yet to be finalized for uh, Viva. And uh, another one is even in the districts, since ours is not a vertical program, since it's the horizontal world, we have to depend on the existing staff. And they are also, what they said is they are overloaded. So, and being a new program, even though we have trained them, it's very difficult like to get even the uh, reporting because our reporting is done through portal. So uh, reporting is a big issue, uh, even though we do it, even if you do it, a lot of things in the ground level, but report is the one which is showing what you are doing. So without report, mm -hmm. we cannot say that we are doing it. So that also we are trying to streamline. And uh, yes, uh, the thing is like manpower is a big constraint for us and especially for drugs and all, like we don't have a logistic officer here. Uh, one is supposed to be with us. So since we are handling uh, like 
two types of drugs, one for B, one for C, and all the kids. So it is also another big, uh, you know, uh, challenge for us because at the state level, only two of us, uh, myself and one assistant, and in the district level also, the DNOs, whoever we have trained, uh, since it is all transferable post because they are from the health department. So those who have given training, Again, they have gone for, some of them gone for uh, their post-graduation and some of them have been transferred to some other districts. So uh, these are some of the, you know, issues and especially data manager who is going to punch the data. So uh, these people are a bit lacking in our program in the sense like uh, since they are doing for every uh, program and since the other programs are, uh, they have been doing it for the other program and mine being a new one it is very difficult for them also like to uh, coordinate with the district nodal officer and the data entry operator. So these are some of the uh, issues we are having. And uh, uh, since our number, we have good number of uh, this thing, you know, injecting drug users. So we are in touch with Manipur State Health Control Society. And very soon we will be going to, we will be starting screening of uh, high charges of the max partner TI NGO, targeted intervention, uh, this thing, NGOs. So we are going to start that one. And uh, this is what we have. And the number of hepatitis C, the number of hepatitis C, uh, treatment, those who are on treatment as of now, as we have already completed more than 1,000. And then as far as B is concerned, around 600 people are on treatment right now. Okay, thank you very much. But I'm sure you have, you have good future plans and with people like you at the helm of affairs, I think these are these problems and challenges, valid challenges which you are facing. I hope with time they will go away. Uh, and you spoke about data, Dr. Rosie. So do you think it is important to have segregated yes. data on male, female, transgender people, uh, people who inject drugs, as you said, they are a large yes. number. So is there segregated data being collected? Yes. Or? Yes. Yes. Uh, like uh, they uh, want us to, uh, you know, find out like, how many charges are there, for how many of them are from the injecting drug users. But as of now, uh, we are finding it a bit difficult as we don't have a main power, as I have said. Yeah, uh, but it is uh, us every now and then from the center. And uh, uh, to some extent, we could do it. But uh, like for the whole of the districts, we are not able to collect it. And one important thing is like all the uh, hepatitis, I mean, all the, uh, this one pregnant woman, that is ANC attendees are mandatory to go for hepatitis B screening. And uh, so this is what we have started. We have taken uh, into uh, consideration in the like, we are taking it very seriously because the most common route of uh, hepatitis B infection is vertical. So this is what we are doing it now. We are screening all the hepatitis B, uh, hepatitis B for pregnant women and those who are found uh, positive, they are given immunoglobulin. But then we told, uh, we also have already conveyed the messages that uh, it is not only the hepatitis uh, immunoglobulin, which is important, but birth dose, birth dose is very important because if it is given, then at least whether uh, irrespective of their mother status, the child will be, you know, protected from 95, at least from 95% uh, from uh, hepatitis B infection because childhood is the stage where they will get, uh, uh, there is chances of getting hepatitis B infection because they tend to fall sick very often and have to be brought to the hospital and from, I mean, uh, from the uh, hospital, they might get infected also. So this is what we give importance. So we are also in touch with the SIO, that is state immunization officer. And as you have said, like it is very good to know the number of HRGs, like how many of them from IDU, I mean, from uh, how many of them are people who inject drugs, how many of them are from this uh, hemophiliac patient, how many of them are from uh, dialysis, 
so uh, it will be good so uh, if we have a good number of uh, you know uh, what to say main power the main power is supposed to be there if we have then i think definitely it will help because uh, we should be knowing like in which group this hepatitis is maximum or b is maximum if we if we are able to segregate definitely will come to know and then we can plan like how to mitigate that also so uh, uh, but we are a bit struggling i should be saying we are struggling for that yes we, we understand we do understand that yes uh, dr rosi in your opinion how important are the community treatment observatories in manipur on hepatitis and hiv and are these community treatment observatories uh, helping to improve the hiv and hepatitis responses Ma'am, could you uh, repeat it? I, I just couldn't get it. Yeah, the equation. Yeah. I just couldn't. Uh, how important are the community treatment observatories? There are community treatment observatories in Manipur on hepatitis and HIV. So, uh, are they helping? Well, there was a report recently out about them. So, are they helping these uh, to improve the HIV and hepatitis responses? You are on mute, Dr. Rosie. We cannot hear you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Could, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Now. Yes. Yeah? Can. Yes. Yes. So, uh, like um, some uh, some organization have come up, like YRG Care. Yeah, and then there is another uh, NGO by the name Pond that is Community uh, Network for Empowerment. Okay, there is one other group. So they are, uh, I mean, like they don't treat the patient directly. This Pond, what they do is like they are uh, before the implementation of our National Viral Hepatitis Control Program, they used to help these people who are, uh, you know, drug users and co-infected uh, co with hep C or hep B, okay. So they used to in touch with the uh, doctors from Reims and Jennings, from Reims and Jennings, and uh, they used to uh, motivate these people to come forward for testing, screening, and diagnosis. And since uh, the, uh, the drugs were not available, free of course, so they used to, uh, uh, they used to like uh, communicate with the pharmaceutical companies and then a subsidized rate they used to provide for the patients. It was very, very uh, useful. That's what I was told. And as of now, hello. 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 Yes. Yes. You can hear. Yeah. Yeah. You're you're on mute, Doctor Rosie. Hello. 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 Yes. Please unmute yourself. You have muted yourself, Dr. Rosie. Can you hear me now? Yes, 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 we can hear you. Okay, okay. Yes. So it's good that like the, uh, the uh, NGOs group are also coming up to help out because as I told you, like uh, for us, only two of us and uh, for us, I mean, like at the national level, I mean, like at the state level under this national viral hepatitis control program, only two of us. So this, uh, people the ngos who, are, who have been working in the field of uh, hepatitis they are they are the ones who are in touch with the real patient also so they are the one who's helping us to motivate and to mobilize these people because now everything is free of course uh, starting from testing diagnosis up to treatment so uh, they are very helpful and then uh, if they 
like if they help us and then uh, it will be you know like our uh, program uh what we are targeting 30 that is elimination will be you know of great help from if they help us then for us also it will be of great uh this thing uh achievement for us also if they are helping us that way because uh, recently you know i had read a report on analysis of community treatment observatory data for hiv and hepatitis c virus services in india and indonesia and in India, they had taken the state of Manipur in this report. And uh, uh, one thing yeah. which was uh, intriguing in the report, which said that the number of people screened for viral hepatitis during March to September 2021 was 1,624. Mm -hmm. And then between October and December 2021, the number, was, number of people screened was 10,372. So please help us understand how those screened, the number jumped up in three months, which is a positive jump, but it jumped more than six months uh, between October and December. So we just wanted to understand what happened that uh, this had a multiplier effect on screening, that the number of people screened during uh, October. Mina, you got this information? There is a report which have been, uh, uh, which has come out analysis of uh, community treatment uh, observatory data for HIV and hepatitis C virus. I can send you a copy of that. Where, yeah, uh, yeah, please send me because yeah, I yeah. do not, I'm not, uh, I'm, I mean, I, I, I don't have much idea about that, but okay. uh, what we do together is, uh, yeah, uh, I don't okay. have much about uh, okay. this. Okay. Just one last question, Dr. Rosie. Uh, yes. Do you think, what, what are the problems related to the female partners of uh, people who are uh, injecting drug users and also females themselves who are injecting drugs do they uh, face specific problems or spe specific challenges in accessing treatment and care yeah it is always there because uh, more of a uh, especially the women uh, they don't have the health seeking behavior. Number one is generalized. They don't have this uh, compared to the male partners. And also, especially if you come to this uh, high risk group, like female sex worker or drug users, like uh, they have, uh, I mean, stigma is still there. And they themselves also like stigmatize themselves, like uh, um, I'm different from others. Okay, so when it's somebody, lot of counseling and uh, not under Manipur state, I mean, under Manipur state AIDS control society, they do have a uh, few NGOs who are working for this female sex workers, injecting drug users. So uh, since I was also posted there for nearly five years, I was debuted uh, at Manipur state AIDS control society for five years. So I knew, and then I uh, I used to contact with them. I used to talk to them why they don't come to the hospital for their you know problem, health problem and all. So uh, these people belongs to most of them belongs to the marginalized group of people. And uh, I mean, like if when they think of uh, day to days, you know, they're uh, this thing. What to say? They are all uh, bread. Uh, this thing. Uh, they are the one who. What to say? Uh, I mean, like, uh, since they don't have much money, and they don't have much money, and they don't want to spend anything going to the hospital, and then so, like, they keep it as it is, and when it becomes serious, only then only, like, they have to go, they feel like they have to go to the hospital. Otherwise, they will hide it from others also. Uh, that is a big challenge, even if how many times we tell them like you have to, and even if it is made free for them, they don't come out. I mean, uh, that thing is still there, even though uh, it has improved from uh, four or five years back, it was very, very, uh, I mean, like minimal that only a few people used to come out. But nowadays, though, since uh, NGOs are there, so they come out, but it is very difficult to convince them that they have to go for a uh, health checkup and all. Okay. Okay. And, and so what they want is broad step. I mean, we have to go and provide them everything. That way, they will be uh, agreed. So, so the, that must be part of your future plans and programs. That in future, 
you would like to expand these services and bring all these yeah. people into the fold also that must yes. be part of your program mm -hmm. and you did mention that because of covid 19 uh, services were uh, impaired so can you uh, tell us a little more about how the of course covid 19 caused the devastation everywhere throughout the country yes, so how yes. did impact how did it impact the hepatitis program in manipur regarding diagnostics screening treatment svr tests mm -hmm. viral load testing uh, yeah and how uh, means uh, what did you do to minimize that impact if you could just yes. share yeah definitely as i told you like we have only two uh, centers that is reams and Jennings. okay we have two modal treatment centers and these two colleges these are medical colleges so what happened is because of the surge of covid uh, like uh, we used to use this rt pcr testing and then this rt pcr was utilized for covid testing Right. So COVID testing, all the uh, staff, all the doctors are also utilized for doing COVID because COVID was something we took very seriously. And since uh, they have taken up this RT-PCR testing for COVID, we for, at the same time have to go for our own. So we have uh, like we highlighted this to our uh, principal secretary and then we, uh, you know, outsource it to another uh, uh, diagnostic center. Okay, so for nearly six months, we outsourced uh, to uh, this thing uh, to another diagnostic center, and that is how we managed, we could manage the testing of uh, viral lot. And uh, so after that, whoever come, we have, they were tested, and whoever found positive, they all started, all initiated treatment. Only things that those people who are staying, I mean, in the far flung area who could not come to Imphal, so uh, we also told, uh, we also requested uh, MSF, that is Man uh, Medicine Science Frontier, uh, Frontiers, but again, they have their own criteria, means they do not uh, give uh, facility to the general population as such. Okay, so um, as I have told you, like maximum number of hepatitis C positive belongs to injecting drug users so uh, we told them to you know help them do their testing in their setup whoever comes there uh, because they cannot come for a viral lot testing to manipur i mean to infar that is how we did the management and then as far as uh, medicine is concerned uh, because from others also for, for regarding covid uh, related uh, this thing like uh, they all come to uh, and then everything from the headquarter. So whoever comes. So by the time uh, they reach here, so we uh, already spoken to all the district nodal officer and all the requirement, all the drug uh, required for their own districts they have been distributed to these people. So we didn't have much idea, uh, didn't, um, didn't have much problem in distributing the drugs and reaching out this to all the people who comes to their respective uh, district hospital for treatment. Only problem was the uh, uh, viral lot test. So that also we could somehow manage. Okay, okay. so then uh, anything else you would like to share? It has been so informative to hear from you uh, about all these things. Uh, so your parting message or anything else you would uh, like to say, Dr. Um. Yes, like um, uh, even though it is not official, uh, I was told by the Manipur State AIDS Control Society because we have done for the first time the sentinel surveillance, uh, the sentinel surveillance of HIV in that we are like hepatitis B and C are also included. So uh, we will be able to know the baseline of every districts and also the state of Manipur and as a whole this, uh, for India. So uh, once we know that, then uh, we will be in a better position to target which uh, you know district is having the maximum number of vulnerable group so that we can plan our future uh, this thing to uh, to be able to reach out to these people and also we are uh, asked to uh, you know coordinate with Manipur State AIDS Control Society this is what we are doing because they are already they have been there uh, much, much before there's viral hepatitis and they have good number of uh, uh, this thing, staff in place, okay, in all the districts. And also we are planning to uh, do the, uh, this one, uh, we're going to use the uh, PPTCT, that is prevention from mother yeah. 
child. Uh, that prevention uh, that is being done in all the, that testing is being done in all the gynecology department. So we are going to chip in there, like when they do for this testing for HIV and STI, we also, uh, we also have requested that hepatitis B uh, testing for all the screen for all the mothers should be incorporated uh, in their, you know, testing. So we have started, in fact, we have started at this two medical colleges in the PPT CT setup, uh, we provide the kids for hepatitis B and they are doing this hepatitis B screening in their setup. So in the future, uh, what uh, we are also wanting like uh, to eliminate, our main aim is to eliminate uh, the viral hepatitis by 2030. And to be able to do that, we really need to gear up now. And so we need the help of all the NGOs and also any other organization who wants to help us, like, uh, like for example, manpower is also, I mean, like it's a, it's a big challenge. So whoever wants to help us, uh, for providing manpower, like uh, lots of other uh, uh, these things are coming up, bilateral donors are coming up. So uh, for us also, if they can provide us uh, this manpower, especially uh, for transportation, if uh, before the starting of this uh, viral lot test in all the district, if they could help us in transportation of sample, then it will be of good, you know, uh, it will be a good achievement for us if we could do that. Thank you very much, Dr. Rosie. Friends, we were listening to Dr. Rosie Rajkumari, Manipur State's Nodal Officer for the National Viral Hepatitis Control Program of Government of India. And thank you very much. And, no, and yes. before, before, before ending, before yes. ending, I would like to request Madam Sova Sukla to uh, give some comment and then how to improve uh, our, you know, uh, this um, activities. Uh, and I have already, uh, you know, highlighted some of my uh, challenges, some of the activities which we are doing it. So how could we improve? Please give us some, uh, uh, oh, okay. I mean. You, you are the best person, Dr. Rosie. You are at the helm of affairs. I can understand what challenges you are facing. And despite those challenges, what, what good work you are doing. So I'm sure we can just uh, carry forward your words of wisdom to others to know what are the what are basically the structural challenges where and as you cited that the shortage of human power is uh, is one of the main challenges so wish you all the best and you are the with people like you i'm sure we'll be able to overcome these challenges and sort them out in future thank you very much thank you thank you uh, thank you thank you namaste namaste